A handmade cup contains so much more than the liquid that's poured into it. They are a record of the tools we've used, a record of our fingers moving across the clay, and ultimately, they are us. As Bernard Leach once famously said, the pot is man. When we share our pottery, really what we are doing is we are sharing ourselves, and it becomes a form of communication. When you drink from a friend's cup, you think about them and you treasure your memories together. In this project, we will use sound to represent our interests, values, and personalities. When your pot comes out of the kiln, consider trading it with a friend. Trading mugs with a close friend and using that mug can be a very valuable and rewarding experience, and I highly encourage it. All right, let's get started. To begin, you're going to roll out a slab on the slab roller and use a template to cut out a rectangle. Here my rectangle is about 6 inches tall by about 12 inches wide. If you want a taller cup, you'd use a taller template. Next we're going to create a drinking edge. There are several ways to do this, but one popular way is to put your slab at the edge of the table and you're going to use a fettling knife. Place the fettling knife on the table edge at a 45 degree angle and you're going to use the table edge sort of like a train track and pull the fettling knife along the edge of the table. This will create a beveled edge that's even and will make a nice drinking edge later on. Next, you're going to use a cardboard tube and you're going to wrap your template around the cardboard tube and put a piece of tape on it. It's really important that the tape does not tape to the cardboard tube because you're later you're going to use this to slide your clay off the tube. Next, you're going to roll the tube on the clay slab. It is really important to consider the angle of the drinking edge. It should angle towards the inside of the cup. Now that you have your slab rolled around the tube and overlapping, you're going to use a fettling knife and cut a miter joint. To do this, hold the fettling knife at a 45 degree angle and cut straight down. This is going to make a much stronger joint than a butt joint because it has more surface area. Remove the extra parts of clay and score it with your serrated rib. Because our clay is so soft, a serrated rib is plenty of scoring for this edge. If our clay was drier, we'd need to score a little bit deeper, but the serrated rib really works good for this, and all we need to do is put a little bit of water on it. But you do want to make sure that you get all the edges. A lot of times people forget the top and the bottom edge of the bevel joint, so make sure you get all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom on that bevel joint. When pressing the two slabs together, you want to be careful not to pinch or dent the slab at all. Just be really gentle and push the sides together. Try not to create too many fingerprints. This will thin out the slab and make a thin spot later on. This trick will make your cup very strong. You're going to use a smooth metal rib, paint a little bit of water on it, and you're going to curve it to the curvature of the cup. Hold it parallel to the pot and rub it up the side of the joint. This is going to compress that clay together and it's going to push it against the paper, eliminating any visible seam there. It's going to make a really great joint. In addition to using the metal rib, we're also going to use our handmade bisque stamps to add a texture to the cup. This will really compress that clay together and it'll also make an extremely beautiful place for the glaze to break.
Once you have that completed, use a slab and stamp that as well. Trace the outline of your cup and score and slip the bottom on. This is going to be a false bottom and you'll see how that works later on. Notice how the texture is facing up. This is going to be a really beautiful thing when you finish your cup of coffee to see that beautiful glazed texture on the bottom of your mug. Score and slip it again. It's very wet, so all we need is the serrated rib and water. Give it a little wiggle to lock it down. Cut around it. Finish the inside with a paintbrush. Use the back of your hand to make a slight impression. Set your cup aside for a minute. We're going to make some clay beads. I want you to make them in some fun shapes, like think about things that are important to you. Maybe you want to make one in a football shape because you're in the, on the football team. Maybe you want to make one in a heart shape to represent a person you love. Make them in any shape you want, but make sure they're personal. Set them aside to dry. When they've dried to the leather hard or bone dry stage, we're going to place them in some toilet paper or a tissue, and we're going to wrap them in the toilet paper or the tissue. That is going to be a separating agent to keep them from sticking to the slip um, when we attach the other false bottom onto this. Don't worry, the paper will burn out in the kiln, it won't hurt your cup. Create an additional bottom for your cup by rolling out a second slab, cutting around it, and scoring it and putting water on it just like we did before with the serrated rib and some water. After you've scored the false bottom, add your clay beads inside the cavity and attach the second bottom on there. Push it down to make sure it's secure. Use your rib to scrape off any extra clay. And then you can finish it off with your bisque stamp to match the pattern of the rest of your cup. Once you've finished stamping, we're going to put them in our bins to let them dry out to the leather hard stage, and I will see you next class. Have a great day.